It's Friday, April 9th, and the time for your Barbados Today morning news of week. Visitors to Barbados who have been vaccinated against COVID-19 will be subjected to new protocols come next month, including a shorter quarantine. A special committee has also been established to monitor those protocols and to ensure security at quarantine facilities are up to scratch. Prime Minister Mia Motley, who made the announcement yesterday, explained that the country could no longer afford to keep the tourism sector partially closed as it accounted for 45% of all economic activity. We do have a settled protocol for vaccinated persons and a vaccinated person is defined as that person who in a two-dose regime has received both doses plus 14 days or a one-dose regime, one dose plus 14 days. And as a result, they would now be permitted to come into Barbados with a different set of protocols from those persons who are unvaccinated. In essence, and the protocols will be released to the public, um, but in essence, it still requires that even though you're vaccinated, that you come to the island with a PCR test that is negative from within the last 72 hours. And that upon arrival in the country on the morning after, that you will do a PCR test, whether a rapid test or a classic PCR test. And that you will have limited movement um, within the hotel if you're staying in a hotel in a government facility, if you're staying in a government facility, um, but that we will continue to review these protocols to ensure that they're functioning well. Remember, these are vaccinated persons. Prime Minister Motley said that the monitoring committee would be tasked with ensuring that everything was in place and working effectively. We all know that we need, whether we recognize it or not, we take risk in life every day. But in taking risk, we try to be safe. And the country, therefore, must be no different with respect to ensuring that safety remains our primary concern even as we open back up to the world. We feel, therefore, that it was important for us to establish a tripartite monitoring committee which, over the course of the next four weeks, will work with the hotel sector, with the tourism attractions, with the stakeholders like the taxi drivers and all others, um, to make water sports operators, beach vendors, etc., to make sure that our protocols are as tight as they can be and to make sure that the framework for monitoring is also as tight as they need to be, recognizing that even though the risk is minuscule, that we are not and should not be allowed to drop our guard. The vacant post of Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Tourism Marketing Incorporated will be filled. Prime Minister Mia Motley gave the assurance two days after former acting CEO Petra Roach resigned from the state agency. Speaking during a press conference at Ilao Court yesterday, Motley said a headhunt for the best possible person to fill the position will soon begin. That position will be filled, obviously COVID literally put a pause on the search for a CEO um, over the course of 2020. We had conversations with persons and it was felt generally that it made no sense proceeding because there was too much uncertainty globally and anybody who is of any serious worth and credibility may not decide that they want to apply at this point in time. That now being behind us, particularly with the vaccinations of the last three months and a perspective that sees some level of travel and visiting being part of our future again, we took a decision actually a couple of weeks ago that we would want to ensure that we do a head hunt to get the best possible person. And I want to make this point to the country. Um, whenever we have gone for the best, we have always succeeded. And this country depends too much on tourism for us not to go for it. More effort is needed to get students in Barbados and other Caribbean countries back to the face-to-face -face classroom environment. That's according to the findings of a new UNICEF survey that showed most students and teachers in at least eight Caribbean countries were struggling with the current online method of classes and they, along with parents, preferred a return to the face-to-face -face system.
The findings of the rapid assessment of the effectiveness of communication interventions for the safe reopening of schools report was presented at a virtual UNICEF media briefing on Thursday. Dr. Alois Kamuraji, UNICEF representative for the Eastern Caribbean, said each country had to weigh the pros and cons of keeping students away from the physical classroom setting. What we are saying, whenever possible, uh, prioritize the reopening of uh, schools. Mm -hmm. uh, think twice before taking the decision to close the school. Um, manage the risks uh, and that takes leadership that takes leadership but it cannot be a kind of emotional emotional decision ah yes because there have been a case and then we we close schools no it should be an informed uh, the, the, the decision not uh, an emotional decision because there is for instance an outcry Meantime, the survey also showed that Barbados has emerged as a possible example for a safe return to face-to-face -face teaching. According to the new study by UNICEF, students and teachers in the country reported very high levels of monitoring when it comes to the COVID-19 protocols. Dwayne Devonish, who is a professor of management and organizational behavior at the UWI Cable campus, is one of the researchers. This one from the Barbados uh, segment in the secondary school system, the auxiliary staff was a great help in ensuring that students follow the protocol in the preparation for the return of, of, of the students to the school. Now that is interesting because that contrast actually demonstrates, um, again, how Barbados was able to, in the, in the secondary school system, leverage other staff members to be quote unquote police officers in the school. To, to assist teachers and other staff members in, in ensuring that students and other persons were actually complying, adhering to the protocols. Uh, now remember, I would have stated at the outset in the primary school system, there, we, there was the leveraging of the school monitors, uh, which was actually a very useful initiative that, that you know, kind of reduced the pressure on teachers to be always surveilling students. So they, they actually showed up the policing powers in the, in the physical school setting. And here we're seeing in the secondary school set system that the auxiliary staff were actually chipping in to ensure that students were following protocol. So there's some best practices I think that we can take, we can take away in the Caribbean. There's regional and international news after this short break. To developments in the region, CARICOM has mobilized its resources to support St. Vincent and the Grenadines as it faces the possibility of an imminent eruption of the La Sofre volcano. That's according to CARICOM Chairman Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley following Thursday's evacuation of the immediate area of the volcano. Residents yesterday began moving to safe zones or to board cruise ships to neighboring islands. Dr. Rowley said that the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency had activated its regional support operation, including the deployment of a specialist to Kingstown, and was also providing technical assistance to NEMO with evacuation and logistics planning. Several Caribbean governments also issued separate statements promising support, including Barbados, St. Lucia, Grenada, Guyana, Trinidad and Tobago, and Antigua and Barbuda. Prime Minister Gaston Brown stated that original airline Liat is standing by to assist with the evacuation process. To reiterate the commitment of the government and people of Antigua and Barbuda to continue to stand in solidarity with our brothers and sisters in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. 
Now, we are currently mobilizing uh, to receive a few hundred uh, Vincentians, and those Vincentians uh, would be accommodated at the, uh, the, the uh, Jolly Beach Hotel. And in addition, we have also placed them um, Lee at um, on standby to assist with the evacuation. So Antiguan Barbados stands ready to assist. Uh, so we also, you know, pray for the best, but at the same time, we're preparing for the worst. On the international front, President Joe Biden on Thursday unveiled a series of executive actions to address gun violence in the United States. More from Reuters TV. Gun violence in this country is an epidemic, and it's an international embarrassment. President Joe Biden and his Attorney General Merrick Garland announced limited measures to tackle gun violence in the United States on Thursday in what the White House described as a first step to curb mass shootings community bloodshed, and suicides. Everything that's being proposed today is totally consistent with the Second Amendment. And there's a wide consensus behind the need to take action. The idea that we have so many people dying every single day from gun violence in America is a blemish on our character as a nation. Speaking in the Rose Garden to an audience filled with family members and victims of gun violence, Biden said the new measures include plans for the Justice Department to crack down on self-assembled ghost guns. Measures would also make stabilizing braces, which effectively turn pistols into rifles, subject to registration under the National Firearms Act. Biden said he would also ask the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives to release an annual report on firearms trafficking in the U.S. and make it easier for states to adopt red flag laws that flag at-risk individuals who own guns. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.